Hi, and welcome to Notability Part 2, Annotations. In this video, we're going to work on creating new documents, using the annotation tools, and making some auto shapes. Enjoy! So you can see that I have a note opened in Notability using my iPad. If I navigate back to my home screen, you can see that I have my subject set up on the left-hand side, and within each subject, um, I could see the notes that I'm creating. So here I am in the purple My Notes subject, and I have my first note ready to go. If I wanted to delete this, incidentally, I could just slide to the left, and the trash can would appear. As we look at our notes and the organization of how a document is set up, let's take a look at the tools across the top. Just to point out, and we'll get into this in just a minute, but here is the texting tool, the pencil, the highlighter, the eraser, the lasso, the pointer button to allow you to select things, and there's also a presentation laser tool. Those are all bundled in because those are things that you would work, use all around the same time when making notes. Next we have the microphone button, which is great for recording narrations, the insert button, and I'll have a whole video on this um, that will be linked in the description, the options menu, where you could find out different paper styles and use uh, different items like line paper and colors and things, and then your, um, your slide deck organizer. So let's take a look before we begin to tap on the triple dot or the pull down menu for different options that you have within your templates. As shown previously in the settings um, setup, you could go through and create default paper, but if you were interested in changing just this file's paper, you can go ahead and click on any of the different types of file templates that are available. Uh, most commonly is plain or lined paper, um, but you may also slide um, your menu bar and see different things that might be um, more applicable to education, creative, or planning. For now, I'm going to use the ruled paper, and I'm going to trip on the triple dot to show me a different amount of spacing that I could use. So sliding further to the right, um, I will have more primary grade um, spacing, and if I slide all the way over to the left, I'll have more college ruled lined paper. So here I am going to leave it at, at uh, 0.4 um, lined, and I do like changing the paper color. It's a little bit easier on the eyes compared to the bright white, especially if you're using it for a long time. So I'm going to select Done, and you'll see now that my paper is lined up, and I have this yellowish color to it, and I'm ready to begin. So let's get started. First, I'm going to tap on the texting tool. And by doing so, I'll tap somewhere right here in the upper left-hand corner of my paper, and you can see that I will get the toolbar to, or excuse me, the, um, the keyboard to appear. My cursor is blinking. I have the ability to um, indent left or to the right. I have the ability to change the font style, size, color, and some basics around bold, italics, and underline. These three hearts are going to show me um, I could save a particular style and make that one of my three favorites. I could change the spacing vertically and add some bullets. So as we go along, I'm just going to simply type in my first name. And as you would expect, that's what I could do to type. By tapping and holding on the, um, the text, I can drag across to highlight different things. And if I wanted to change the color, for example, make it bold, change the uh, font style, um, I could go ahead and do all that. And if I like this red, bold, um, 14 size font, I could make that my favorite by tapping on one of the different choices, A, B, or C. So I could click into that, be a little bit more specific with which one is going to be the font, the size, the color, and so forth. So now each time I tap on the letter, it's hard to see with the, without the pointer, but if I go from A to, I'm gonna tap on B, 
it will now have that style. If I tap on A, it goes back to uh, the original font size and color and so forth. So play around with that. You'll also notice that while we're here, the iPad has uh, the microphone button down by the spacebar. And if I was going to do some speech to text, I can go ahead and tap the microphone and record something. So here's a quick narration. Hi, my name is Paul, and this is a session on Notability. Exclamation point. New paragraph. I love using Notability to take notes. Period. So you can see when using some clear enunciation, um, the microphone speech to text works really nice. Okay, I'm going to hide the keyboard by tapping on the bottom right hand corner and now I'm going to use some of the other tools. So let's try the pencil. Um, it's defaulted to use red and if I just try to um, write my name across the paper here you could see that I'm able to do that and um, now it might get a little bit tricky trying to find exactly where and how big I need to write in order to um, make my note look the way I want with the line spacing and so forth. So by using the pinch-pull technique with my thumb and um, index finger, I can zoom in or zoom out of a part of the page. So if I go closer to the bottom, so I'm just going to put an arrow down here by the bottom right, and I will pinch and pull on that, and that is now the center of my zoom or um, my, my focus point. So um, I can work on that a little bit. Um, once people begin to realize that they enjoy using the the stylus pen, there is the mic, uh, magnifying glass in the bottom right hand corner. And what this lets me do is it allows me to take my cursor at the top portion of the page and place it anywhere where I want to next write my notes. So you'll see that I'm going to place it just below some of the text that is available. And you'll see that it appears to have a blank line. You can see just at the edge here, uh, the top of my letter P because it's in that magnifying glass window. But now I can begin to write pretty comfortably. And you'll notice that as I go and write past this blue edge at the bottom right hand corner, that is kind of like an auto advance um, tool that allows the, um, the magnifying glass to advance to the right hand side, the edge of the paper. And I can even use some of these navigation tools inside the magnifying glass toolbar to do a hard return, for example. So I'm going to press this button here, right in the middle, and you'll notice that my magnifying glass advances down one line and to the left. So have fun playing with that. While experimenting and navigating, um, I'm just going to slide uh, the document a little bit and I'm going to tap off the ma uh, magnifying glass and show you about the uh, features within the pencil tool. So if I tap a second time, you'll see that on the left hand side I have the line thicknesses. By clicking on different dots, my pen thickness is going to get larger or smaller. By clicking on the right hand side of the palette, I can choose different colors that I want to write with. And if I just take my finger carefully in between those palette colors, I can slide over to many more different uh, tools. And I can even add um, my own colors um, as I wish if I know some of the hex colors. And you can look these up on the internet uh, to find very specific colors for uh, branding purposes. Uh, you could tap those color um, codes in and uh, be able to really cater to um, and control what you'd like to draw. The same is true with the highlighter. In the highlighter, if I tap it a second time, again, the, the thickness of the highlighter will be um, based on the, the, the dot size and of course the colors too. But you'll see that when we start highlighting things, it's gonna have a translucent type of appearance. And right now I'm just highlighting my name, but I'm not picking my pen off of the screen. If I do it a second time, so I've just removed my pen and now I'm going to do a second time, you'll start to see some layering in a third time and a fourth time and a little bit of shading and shadowing uh, is going to appear as I layer up different colors. So have fun playing with that a little bit. The next big piece is the eraser. 
if I tap on the eraser with one foul swoop. So using my pointer, I'm going to show you in this red line, I'm going to, with the eraser, swipe down right through the middle of the line. And you'll see that that whole line is going to be removed because that arrow was made with one um, pen stroke. I can undo that to return it. And if I tap the eraser a second time, you'll see now I have either a hole, which is what it was just set to, or a partial eraser. And just like the pens or highlighters, I could choose the thickness of the eraser amount. So I will leave it at this thickness here so I could show you. And I will do a couple of vertical erasers. Whoops, into partial. I could make several different um, you know, broken lines. So um, the eraser tool is, is, uh, has a lot of control in these newer versions of Notability where I could erase whole items or just pieces of items. The lasso button is key also in working with different things that you have drawn, whether it be with the highlighter or with the pencil tool. So for example, I'm going to circle this uh, arrow down at the bottom of the screen and I could now, uh, using my pinch pull technique with my thumb and index finger, I can move that, I could rotate it, I could resize it. Um, there's a variety of things that you could do as soon as you um, select an item. And since the item is selected, you'll see that now I have some other options to work with. So I'm going to click on style and I can change the color or the thickness. I could even now I'm going to take two fingers and tap right inside the selected area so that that toolbar returns. I can duplicate it and now begin to you know, make an easier time, be more efficient with my note making. Obviously, I can cut, copy um, the items, and I could delete them as well. The Convert button is going to show us how to use, let me just get rid of some of this um, I'm highlighting here. I'm going to highlight the whole thing and delete this area here. But now I'm going to go ahead and write my name again and show you how the text converter tool works. With the lasso, I'm going to circle this up. I'll tap inside to get my menu bar up and I'm going to convert this into text where now you could see at the top of the screen it's showing me, and since I write with all capital letters, it too will be capitalized with all of the different text. And if I want that to appear in text, uh, there it is with the color and the style that I would have expected. So those are just a couple of features with using the pencil, the highlighter, the eraser, and the lasso button. Uh, there's still other things that we'll do in some advanced sessions, but for now I want to work on the pencil tool with auto shapes. Auto Shapes is great with making um, different items. And if you're careful enough, I'll make a square. I'm going to connect it that and then hold it. And you'll see how it bounces in. If I made a square with like an open um, corner or line, um, it's not going to auto generate. But if I tap and hold long enough, it knows that I'm trying to make a square and it will um, appear as such. So let me just work on. Uh, that by clicking on the hand button, I'm going to double tap right inside, um, or I'm going to lasso this uh, this square here. Oops. Use the lasso to get the square, and now I could double tap inside there and get the the different handles of the square, so I could resize it um, using some of the auto tools as well. And now that it is selected, I could change the style. Notice with this menu, I have the outside stroke or the frame, and then the inside fill colors. So first, I'm going to work on the stroke. I could change the thickness by tapping on the different size dot, and then I could change the color. If I tap over to fill, I could now work on the inside color of an auto shape. Let's try it with a few others. Here's a circle. Here is a triangle. Here's a straight line. Tap and hold and just leave it long enough, and there's a perfectly good straight line. With the lasso tool, I could highlight just a portion of it, tap inside it to get my style, and then create whatever it is that I'm looking for. 
If I want to even make a curved line with an arrowhead, if I tap and hold it long enough, you'll see that it will auto-generate. And then I could flip that around and use these different arrows or uh, the handles to really make this look the way I want. So have fun with the Auto Shapes toolbar and um, creating notes as best you want with the control that you want with different colors, pen thicknesses, and so forth. I hope this helps. Enjoy!